lift you high. Higher than any problem, any circumstance, we lift you high. Higher than anything that's going on in your life, good or bad, we lift you high. We lift you higher than our spouse. We lift you higher than our children. We lift you higher than the situations in our job. We lift you high, Lord Jesus. We lift you high. Glory be to God. Highly lifted up. Jehovah Jireh, you're our provider. Jehovah Jireh, you're our provider. We lift you high in this moment, in this time of our life. I don't know about you, but that was such an awesome time in the presence of God. And I think that was just also not only awesome time in the presence of God, I think that was one of those things God is, is literally getting us to a place of, come on, we, you got to lift them high. Come on, you got to lift them high. You got to remember you're not of this world. You got to lift them high. You got to remember things that he called you to be and do. You got to lift them high because this world is trying to keep you down. But he's going to rise and shine for the light is coming. You got to lift them high. So right now, come on, just close your eyes. Come here, Brandon, come on. Let's close your eyes for one moment. And I want you to put your hearts and mind on God right now. And I want you to just lift them high. I want you to do that part one more time. Can we lift you? We lift you high. Yeah. Your way, your way. We lift you high. Your congregation, you sing. Your way, your way. Do that again. We lift you Oh, 
91 that says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, he is my refuge, he is my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. We lift you high, you the Most High God. We hide, we abide under the shadow of the Most High, of the Almighty. I don't know about you, but this is in the time where we've been abiding. This is the time that God wants to get to the secret place. And what I can say is the band and the praise team have set the atmosphere for us again to dwell, to, to dwell into the secret place. We lift you high, the most high. There is no higher than the Lord Almighty. We lift them high, we lift them high. He's our refuge. He's our fortress. My God and him. Will I trust? If you trust him, come on, give God a praise out there. Come on, give God a praise out there. I say one more time, come on, give God a praise out there. Hallelujah. That's trying to make me sing. I can't sing. You know I can't sing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stay in your anointing, tomorrow. Stay in your anointing. Hallelujah. Praise God. We lift you high. Mm. Presence is in this room. Anybody need a healing, you get that healing right now. His presence is in this room. Anybody need deliverance today, because his presence is in the room. You don't got to work for it. It's already here. If, if guilt and condemnation are trying to get you, here it is. Your peace is in the room. Wholeness is in the room. The most high is in the room. He's bigger than any of your problem and the circumstance. He's in the room. All he's looking for is a yielded vessel. Any yielded vessels in the room? Oh, glory, 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 glory. Woo. Glory, 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 glory. Let his train fill the temple. My God, try not to. Be lifted high. 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 This is where you could you can let the tears flow. This is where you can let your guard down. Woo. Be lifted high. As a deer panda for the water. Oh, my soul. This pants for you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. My God. Come on, right where you are, come on, allow the minstrels to minister to you. Come on, close your eyes. I want to just take a moment. I just want to take a moment. And you and God right now. Make it, this place where you are, make it your sacred place right now. You begin to minister to God now. We've been allowing God, but you minister back to God now. Give him the fruits of your lips and the adoration of your heart. You're so good.
Come on, allow God to turn your heart right now. Come on, allow him to turn your heart right now. Woo! Fresh manner in right now from heaven. Allow him to give you strength again. Father, we worship you, we magnify you, we thank you for ministering to us in your praise and worship today, Lord. We thank you for selling our hearts and selling our minds to receive from you today. I lift up every person in this room and I lift up every, the congregation that's online, Father, I lift them up before you. I pray that you continue to bless them and continue to, to, to move on their hearts, to continue, Father God, to change them and, 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 and move them in a way that you were called them to be in this time and season of our life, Lord Jesus. We settle ourselves in your presence, Lord Jesus. We honor you, Father God, with all the fruits of our lips. We honor you with our life, Lord Jesus. We honor you, Father God, with everything that you called us to be. And we honor you with our life, Lord Jesus. And today, Father God, we remind ourselves and we declare to the world that you are the most high. No matter what comes our way, you are the most high. And because of you, you're the most high, Father God, everything has to bow to the name of Jesus. Because you're the most high, everything has to fall under our feet. And Father God, as authority, as believers, for authority as a believer, Father God, we stand in our rightful position and we come boldly to the throne of grace today, Lord Jesus. We obtain, Father God, mercy in the time of need, Lord Jesus. And we need you in this day and hour. And we acknowledge you. And thank you for the strength today, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your power today. Thank you for your loving kindness today. Woo. Thank you for never leaving us, nor forsaking us. Always being with us. <coughs> we honor you. We glorify you. Always in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, if you believe that, come on, just lift up your hands. 
Come on, lift up your hands. Oh, we worship you. We worship you, Daddy. We worship you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo! Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Then I know what to do. I won't go alone. I never go on my own. Just I don't know if you know that song. Anybody know that song speaking in my heart? Who know that song? Do my heart know. Hey Paul, you know that one? Give me your heart for me. If I can't give you, then I know what to do. I won't go alone. I never go on my own. Your spirit guides, and let your word abide. Speak to my heart, Lord. Give me your heart. Speak to my heart, Lord. I don't know about you, I want God to speak to my heart in this moment. That's, that's, woo. I remember that song when I, it came out when I first almost got saved. And I, my whole thing is, God, I want you to speak to my heart. Everybody else has been talking about me and saying things about me, God, but I want you to speak to my heart. I don't know about you, but we're in the time and season we need God to speak to our heart. Everybody on the social media has been talking to us. Everybody in the world has been talking to us. But God, I just want you to speak to my heart. That's your heart cry. Woo! Speak, oh Lord. Speak, oh Lord. Woo! That's the song I was trying to sing. I, didn't, I forgot the words. <laughs> speak. I can't hear from you. Then I know what to do. I never go home. Let your spirit guide. Let your word of God speak to my heart, Lord. Give me your holy word. If I can't hear. Turn this mic on, my God. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Glory be to God. Look through the word of God.
Hallelujah. Hey, stand, stand, speak to my Lord, speak to my heart. I think God's speaking. He's speaking. Now it's time for us to listen. Did he say, think about what he said. He said, he said, the, the God will fill this, fill this, the, fill his, the, the, the temple with his train. Your, def, your enemy has already been defeated. The enemy of poverty has already been defeated. The enemy of, of, of a defeat has already been defeated. The enemy of, 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 of infirmities has already been defeated. And when he built the temple, it reminded you what he already has done. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know what been, been trying to, you've been battling with, but I'm letting you know today, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, whoo, he's in the room. And he wants to speak to his people. Oh, glory be to God. Speak, Lord, speak. I think there's more out there. I've been literally praying that for the, the gifts of the Spirit to be manifested in the house on a greater level. And I must say, the praise team and the band has set an atmosphere. We welcome Holy Spirit in. And when Holy Spirit is in, now it's our job to listen to what he's saying. He's speaking through song. He's speaking through prophetic words. He's speaking through whatever. And, and my job and your job is to now, like Pastor Porsche always said, let's traffic the heavenly. And those of us online, you might not be able to be here today, but you have the opportunity to, to, to come on in. And if God begin to speak to you, come on, write that in the chat. Whatever it might be, speak to my heart, Lord. Speak to my heart. It's so easy to get in a form of fashion, but speak to my heart. God, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. God, thank you. Did y'all learn the words yet? <laughs> glory, glory be to God. Well, listen, I, I know for a fact, and we're going to keep going, but God gave me a word. I've been praying to say, God, what are you doing with this church? What are you doing with this church in this time and season of our life? And I believe that God really gave us this word through ferocity. Folks, we spent 15 weeks on this, this, this digging our heels in it and getting to the foundations of what God calls us to be and do. And I, I began to pray. God said, God, I don't know about you. My wife would tell you I like to ask a lot of questions. Ask questions after questions after questions because I, I want to get information. I want to be so full with information so I, now I can make a good decision. Now I can move forward in what God called me to do and do. And I do the same thing with God. And I begin to speak to God. God, God, what are you doing? What are you doing with us? And this is what he's spoken to, and, and receive this for, for, from God speaking to you. Not, I'm just talking about the church in general, I'm talking about to you, amen? He says, I am raising up a remnant in this time that will on purpose unite as the body to manifest the kingdom of God. There has been such a swift change in man's soul that has caused their fire to turn cold and their spirit to lie dormant. Now is the set time to arise and shine, believer. I am commissioning you to assemble as the body to win the laws at a rapid rate. Repent, be restored, and go. Go win the laws. Go be the light I created you to be. Go be a salt that a land has become blamed. Go be what God called you to be and do. This is our time. This is our set time. The devil's doing everything he can to pull us up. But God is speaking, and it's our responsibility now to listen. He's now, he said, what is he saying? There's a remnant of people. I don't care what everybody else is doing in the world. I don't care what everybody else is saying on social media. But what does God say to us? He said, I am raising up a remnant of people that will win the laws. I ra he said, at a rapid rate. How many know there's some things I got to change at a rapid rate? And then he says, listen. I need you to repent. Repent is not saying you did it, you sinned it like that, but it's saying turn your heart back to your first love. Turn your heart back to who I am. Yes, that relationship trying to get you dormant. Yes, these things trying to pull you back, but today flame on. Time to repent. It's time to allow God to restore your first love. Restore your fire for the lost. Restore your fire for the kingdom. Restore your fire for the things of God. Restore your fire for the church. Restore your fire for your love. For restore the fire of who he is in the earth. Repent! 
and be restored. Repent. The things we have to do, we have to repent, be restored. But look at this. He didn't stop there. The challenge was go. Somebody say go. Say it one more time, go. It's time for us at the church. We, it's, it, 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 it's, it, we're here. Victory, we're here. Charles County, we're here. It's, 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 it's no longer time for us to sit in the seats. It's no longer time for us to, to keep talking about the power. But it's time for us to manifest the power. There's a world that needs you. The fire needs to come back on. That's what I think God is doing when he's doing. He's igniting some things today in worship. He, he's, he's, he's setting the fire back on. He's, he's, he's turning your life back on. Now the thing is, will I receive it? Somebody say repent. Be restored and go. Come on, close your eyes right where you are. God asks you that you now set the fire back on your people. No matter what the age is, Father God, you won't have no teenager, no young person, no, no seasoned saint. I declare today we be restored. Restored by your love. Woo! Restored by your grace. Restored by your power. I feel God in this room right now. Restored by your power, Lord Jesus. Restored by your love. Father God, we be restored by your love. Restore us, Lord Jesus. So much more that God calls you to do. So much more that God called this church to do. And God is saying today to arise. Get out, change your position. Change your posture. Change your perspective. Arise and shine. Somebody say shine. You got to flame on. You got to turn the light back on and shine. You got to allow this. You got to. You got to allow the, the light to come in. Arise and shine, for the light has come. It's here today. It's here today to restore you. It's here today, right now, to, to, to restore your passion. Restore your, your your zeal for the things of God here today. He's here to build a temple. Oh, I love that. That was so good, Minister Greg. Thank you so much for that word. He's here to build a temple. The enemies have already been defeated. His enemies have already been defeated. That's so good. The enemies have already been defeated. Already been defeated. And my job and your job to realize now it's time to what? Go! Somebody say go. Say one more time, go. Say one more time, go. go. What, 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 what does go mean? We gotta move. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta move. We gotta, we gotta change our position from just standing still. We gotta move forward. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for that. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let's see if we can get a little bit in, and then we're gonna get you out of here. Amen. Praise God. Can we give it up for the the praise team and the band for ushering the praise of God? Hallelujah. That's I, I I want I want to want to stay on that, that that subject right there. That I mean I really believe God is really looking for us to 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 move forward in this time of season. We we we, we dig in ferociously focused and we've done all those things, but I really believe that this prophetic word is for this season. This word is for us now. He says uh, he's raising up the remnant. I one thing I realized that we have a choice to be the remnant. Are you going to be the remnant today? Don't don't you don't got to say nothing. I want you to, in your heart speak. All right? He said, are we going to be the remnant? He said, uh, he said we want us to win, win the loss at a rapid rate. I love that because I believe that there's there, there, there so many things that's pulling people, men and women of God, away from the things of God. That from a, from a, from a, uh, um, um, a, 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 what's the word I want to use? This, this, this like snatching people out of the kingdom of God. Snatching them out of the kingdom of God. But one thing I realized, we have the ability to snatch them back into the things of God. Men and women of God, amen? So I want us to look at something. I want you to go to a familiar scripture for me. I'm going to start here. Um, um, let's go to Matthew 28. And Matthew 28 basically starts off with, and this is when Jesus was, um, now he rose from the grave. Amen? Praise God, he rose from the grave. I need y'all put your hands together for that. Jesus rose, oh glory, on the, on the third day. He rose again on the third. He rose on the, from the grave. And that, now the Marys, uh, both Marys ran to the tomb, and they, they was met by an angel. And they was fearful. He said, fear not. 
And begin to tell them, hey, Jesus rose, rose from the grave. Go tell the disciples that he rose from the grave. Y'all remember this story? And then he said, as they rose from the grave, he said, go tell. So as Mary, the both Marys were going back toward, going towards uh, um, the disciples, uh, they were met by Jesus. Can you imagine that? That is, you're with the Son of God, and, and you're with him, and then you see him on the cross. You see him being crucified. You see him put in a tomb, and then on the third day, you see him rose again. That's so good. Third day, he meets them. I don't know about you. I don't know. I want to meet Jesus. I want to get to a place. I'm running somewhere, running towards, telling people about Jesus, and then I meet him myself. And Mary, they met him himself, and they began, he began to tell them, hey, listen, I want you to go tell the disciples to meet me in Galilee. And he began to give them instructions. It's our love about Jesus. He didn't just go to heaven. He left instructions before he left the earth. He, he said, oh, now I'm going to rise, but I'm going to give my believer, I'm going to give the body of Christ some instructions in this time and season of my life. And I began to pray, God, what do you call this church to be? You would set us up with the grace of God. You set us up with having faith, recognize, realizing that we have the faith of God. You set us up to know for a fact that all these things are going to be activated by the love of God. Anybody receive that word today? Anybody been receiving that past 15 weeks of, of that ferociously focus? That God is setting us up for this time and season. Look, so then the question is why? Look what it says in verse 16. Then the 11 disciples went away to Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Ooh, I can preach, but let's keep going. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. All authority. I love about that. He says, here it is. He went to the grave. Rose. I mean, he rose from the third day. Then he says, listen, because I rose on the third day, death can't hold me. Sin can't hold me. All authority. I have all authority. What I love about that, he didn't leave that authority for himself. He gave it to me and you. He said, I've given you all authority. Look at the reason. Here it is. Go. Therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I am, have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Look what it says in verse 20 in the Passion Translation. I'm sorry, let's start with verse 19, I mean 17. Then Jesus came close to them and said, All authority of the universe has been, has been given to me. Now, wherever you go, somebody said, wherever you go. Say one more time, wherever you go, make disciples. Wherever you go, make disciples. Say it again. Wherever you go, make disciples. Wherever you go, make disciples. Of all nations, baptizing them, and look, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to faithfully follow all that I have commanded you. And never forget that I am with you every day. Even to the completion of age. I don't, tell your name, never forget. Say it one more time, never forget. Say, God is, I am with you. That's so good. Never forget Jesus is with you. Never forget he's with you. Never, I, I, I remember being in a, in a hospital bed, and I, I remember, you know what I mean, I was, I was at a point where I was okay, God, I've been in this room for six, years, six days by myself. only person I've been seeing is these nurses, and, and, and I, felt, I felt alone. You ever, felt, you ever been in a room and you felt alone? I felt alone. But then I began to remember, God never leaves me nor forsakes me. He said, don't forget, I'm with you. And in the midst of that, I felt God show up with me. And, and it's, it's in this moment of time and season of our life, with everything that's going on, I have to tell you, never forget that Jesus is with you. Never forget that God is with you. Never forget that he said, I will be with you. But to the end, to the completion, somebody to do the completion, to the completion of age. And we are a season now in our life. We are a time now where the church, God is looking for you again to flame on, looking for you again for us to come to a place where it's not just about us. Amen? He's looking for us to, now here Jesus comes. The last thing he said before he goes up to heaven and says, listen, go, make disciples. Go to all the nations. Somebody say all the nations. Say it one more time, all the nations. I love this word right here. Let's, let's, I like to define some words. Let's define go right quick. Look, look what it says to go. We are, look at this. We are waiting for people to come to the church. We wait for them to log in on social media. We wait for them to log on, on, on our website. But how many know God is looking for us to go? He's looking for us to, to go. 
He's not looking for, you know what I mean? We, we, we got to a place in church where we realized, yeah, we have a good service and people. No, no. He's still looking for you to go. Somebody say go. He's looking for you to go. Be, be an example. To make, to make Somebody say make disciples. He didn't say offer Jesus. He said make disciples. He said we have the ability to make disciples. And look at this. Another word. Somebody say all nations. I love the way God, you, he, he used that word. Uh, uh, and, and he used that word intentionally. All nations. It causes our mind to expand from just thinking about people we look like and are around all the time. It causes your mind not to just to think about the people that's in this room, the people that's in your household. It causes your mind to think, you know what I mean, about people outside of Charles County. He says, listen, all, somebody say all nations. It says it causes you to think that God is, is, is looking for you to look at this, love beyond your preferences. God is looking for us now to share the love of God Beyond our preferences, people that, that we walk in the street with, people that we go to work with, people that, yes, we, but he, he's looking for you to be that example of a believer. People, he's looking for you to go to, somebody said, all nations. There's, there's Muslims that God calls you to. There, there's, 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 there's people that might be in um, 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 other religions that God has called you to to make a change in life. I remember you pastor told us years ago um, that he, uh, Jehovah's Witness knocked on his door. And he invited them, in, invited them in, and you know, you know, a lot of times we don't invite them, we don't invite them in. Can we just be? And he invited them in, and he sat down with them, and he began to share the love of Jesus to them. And each and every one of them gave their life to Jesus Christ. What, I mean, that's going, going to all the nations. That's not closing your doors, shutting your blinds. Don't say nothing until they walk away. Nobody in this room, y'all don't do that with Jehovah's Witness, do you? But he says, he's called you. I need you to have a heart. I need you to have a heart, a change your thinking to. Now God has called me to all the nations. Now God has called me. Look at this. He has, he has given me the ability. He's graced me with the love of God. He's, he's given me the faith. He's given me the love, the same love that he showed me. He said his love will pour out on believers or to other people. So, so, God, you've been setting us up very ferociously focused for this reason, so that we can go, so that we can win the laws, so that we can, yeah, you might not have everything together. You might, you might be working on your marriage. You might be working on your kids, but that does not give you the excuse not to go. We, we, we got to get back to a mindset that church is not just for you. The word that you're getting today is not just for you. It is for the lost. It's for those that have been backslidden. It's for those that do not know to keep... Can you imagine not having Jesus during this time? Can you imagine not having Jesus for this past two years? But you have the opportunity. You have the security of Christ being with you. But when God gave your life, to, when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, it was not just about you. After that, I need you to make disciples. Why? Because I need you to know that the same love that you know. I need you to experience the same grace that you experience. I need you to experience the same faith that you have. I need you to go. I need you to go. Somebody say all authority and all power has been given to him. Now I said it's all authority and all power has been given to me because Christ lives in me. Because Christ lives in me. Because Christ lives in me. It's so good. I need y'all to get this. All authority and all power has been given in you because Christ lives on your inside of you. Tell you no, stop being stingy. Say one more time, stop being stingy. What, what I mean by that? That the same God that set you free, the same God has, 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 has delivered you from sin. The same God has delivered you from drugs and alcohol. And the same God has delivered you from lust. You have that on the inside of you, and he wants you now to give that to someone else. And sometimes we focus so much on God, you got me free here, you got me free here, you got me free, and we forget everybody. Everybody we around. Stop being stingy. He said, go. This is the last commandment that God says, he said, I, give you, I have all authority and all power. Now I need you to go. Hey, your name to go. So now, all authority, all power, how do we manifest that? Look at what it says, it says, um, in, verse, um, in verse 20, it says, Teach them to observe all the things that we have command, that I have commanded you, and lower to them always, 
even to the end. He says that I have command you. So we realized, and we we learned two weeks ago. We learned last week that in in, in Matthew 20. Let's go to Matthew 22, 37. All the commandments that was in the book, and all the commandments that the prophet followed, it all was combined. It all came together in this one in these two commandments: love the Lord God of all your heart, mind, body, and strength. And this is love your neighbor as you what. Love yourself. He said, so here it is. He said, I want you to go ahead. I want you to make disciples. To all, go to all the nations. Go to all the nations and make disciples. Go to all the nations and make disciples. Go to all the nations and make disciples. It's so good now that we had the world, world Wide Web. It's so good now we have so many vehicles that we can reach all the nations. He said, but this is how we do it. We want them to learn. and We want them to learn the commandments. We want you, I need you to show them, one, the love of God. And then two, I need to show them how to walk in the love of God. That's so good to me. Because what happens sometimes, I realize, we get people saved and we say, come on, love Jesus, love, you know, give your life to Jesus Christ. If not, you're going to hell. I know that lasts for a little bit. That scare tactic lasts for a little bit. If you don't give your life to Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. That is true. But then now, after that, how do I make disciples? After that, how do I disciple them? I disciple them with the same love that God shows me. On the same level, he says, listen, the, the first commandment and the second commandment, as unto you, he said, love the Lord God with all your mind, body, and soul. He said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So here it is. God says, now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to love me. I want you to receive my love. But not only that, I want you to love yourself. And then tell, teach your neighbor or make disciples with that same love. That's the commandment that I give. That is so good to me. So, so here it is. I think about the disciples that have left. I think about the disciples before us. I think about those who have, have been evangelists and those who have been preachers and prophets and those who are, have been, been just digging in and, and making a path that you can sit here today and worship freely. Those who, who have was there to tell you about the love of Jesus. Somebody, somebody told you about God. If somebody told you about God, let me see your hand. Everyone in the room, look around. Put your hands down. So, because them. Don't forget this, that Almighty is only one being in this world. Only one being in this world that have the choice to believe, choice to follow Jesus. That's me and you. Birds got to follow Jesus. Animals had to follow Jesus. The, 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 the earth, the, the veggies, they got to grow because of Jesus, because of God. But God has created us to have a free will. Will you follow him? Will you follow him? Will you follow his commandments? Will you follow the command to love him and love yourself and love others? And then say, will you follow the command? Will you go? Somebody say go. This is, this is one of these messages. Literally, it, 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 gets, you, it gets you moving. And you you got to think about because you have to do something outside of yourself. We got to we got to a place in the world. We got a place in, this, in the United States. We got a, a culture that's always about me. But in this kingdom of God culture, it's always about who else I can reach. It's about you, but it's about who can I reach. Amen? Tell, tell your name, I'm the gift. We're going to start a series next week called The Gift. And what, what I'm saying is God says, I am, you have been blessed, look, to be a blessing. Right? You have been blessed to be a blessing. What does that mean? There's something on the inside that you, you have the gift to, to give someone else. There's something on the inside of you, this love, this peace, this joy that God has called you to give to someone else. I am the gift. You are the gift in this time and season of our life. Amen? Look what it says. Look what it says in Matthew 25. So then my question was to God, okay, God, you, you, you called us to go. So then my question was, how do we show the power and authority of God through love to a world? How, you want us to go? How do we show that? How, what, what does that look like? What, what is that? So in Matthew 25, it says this. In, in verse 35, it says, For when you saw me, I'm sorry, for when you saw me hungry, you fed me. When you found me thirsty, you gave me drink. When I had no place to stay, you invited me in. And when I was poorly clothed, you covered me. When I was sick, you tenderly cared for me. And when I was in prison, you visited me. Then the, God, then the godly said, were answered, then the godly, when I will, I'm sorry, then the godly will answer him, Lord, when didn't we see you hungry, thirsty, 
and give you food and something to drink. When you did, we see you, I'm sorry, when did, when did we see you with no place to stay and invite you in? When did we see you, you poorly clothed and covered you? When did we see you sick and tenderly cared for you or in prison and visited you? And look what verse 40 says. And the king answered them, don't you know when you cared for one of the least of these, my little ones, my true brothers and sisters, you demonstrated love for me. He says, here it is. We, we, you know, I mean, we, we, we know that God calls to go. We know God calls to do. So, so how do we do that? How, how do we show the love of God, the same love that God shows us? He says, I need, I need you to position yourself to feed the hungry. I need you to position yourself. Someone might be thirsty. I need you to give them drink. How many of we be around people all the time and, and there's needs, but a lot of times they, they're not, they just don't come out and give you a need. They don't, I mean, a lot of times they're looking for the, 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 the get warmed up or, or, or even your friends, you know, they're going, hey, you need something? What's going on? What, what, what's going on in your life? It, it gives them the opportunity to, to, to get the spiritual need they have. I mean, so here it is. Someone needs food. Someone needs drink. Someone needs clothing. Someone needs, I mean, needs to be visit, visited. The sick needs to be visited. The, those in prison needs to be visited. What is that doing? Now it opens up the love of God to men and women of God. It opens us up so now that we can be a blessing to someone else. Amen? That's so important in this time. See, look what it says in verse 40 in the Message Bible. Then the king will say, I am telling the solemn truth. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it for me. You did it for me. A lot of us, we sometimes we forget that each and every one of us in this room, saved or unsaved, are children of God. Yes, we want, God wants everyone to give their life to Jesus Christ. God wants everyone to, but before, think about it, we are still, still born of God. We were still born of God. We were still, yes, we were born in the sin, but we came from God. Amen? So then when we gave our life to Jesus Christ, God changed us from the inside out. And there's so many people that are walking around that don't know God. There's so many people that walk around that don't know the love of God, have not experienced the love of God. And now here they are looking for hope, and you the hope. They're looking for the answer, and you are the answer. They're looking for peace, and you have peace on the inside. They're looking for help, and you are the help on the inside of them. It's our responsibility in this time and season now to take ourselves off, repent, be restored, and go. There's going to be so many opportunities for to do this. Do this. Look at this. Uh, when we are offering more than, what, what are we offering? You know, there's so many people out here that, uh, I, I'm not even going to try to say that word, philanthropist, somebody say it. Say it one more time. That word, in the world, there's so many companies that, that, that are, are doing well. There's so many companies that are giving to the hungry. There's so many companies that are doing all those things. There's so many companies that are feeding people. There's so many companies that, that are doing these things. But as believers, there's something that, that we have on the other side of that. Well, if you look past the food that we're going to give, amen, we're going to start feeding the hungry some more, Amen. I need y'all to say amen with me. You know what I mean? It's so, it's so much more behind us clothing the, the poor. I know we're going to be clothing the poor. I need y'all to get, I, I, I need y'all to hear this. What, what's behind what we do is that we know for a fact there's an eternal God that loves them. That yes, we're offering you something naturally, but you're going to live, leave with something spiritual. We're offering you something natural, but behind that, that that's just a door open that we're going to offer you life. That we're going to offer you peace. That we're going to offer you love. The same God that saved us. The same God that delivered us. The same God that took us to another level. The same God, what we want to offer that to you. So it's not us just giving food and going back and saying, hey, look how many people we fed. How many people? And those things are so good. But we now want to offer you eternal life. Oh, my God, I need y'all to get this. I, I, there, there, there has to be a mindset where, where we're not just doing, we're just not feeding people, which we are. But now there has to be a mindset. Now, in that, let me, let me let you, can I pray for you? Can I believe God for you? And I always say this. When you go out, you ever been out to eat with somebody? And you let them talk, and they start eating, they start opening up their heart. Yeah, I'll let me tell you what's going on with my family. Let's go. I'm like, my God, uh, I was just trying to give you some McDonald's. and uh, this. Was, but how many know when you... When you begin to share the love of God from that place, it opens up people's hearts to be vulnerable. So 
So our job and my job is, yes, in, 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 in Matthew 25, we want to do what Jesus said as we feed the hungry. It's like we did it unto him. But it's, that's not the end result. The end result is now we want them to give their life to Jesus Christ. We want them, we want, God said he's called us to, to go to the lost. God has called us to, 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 to now win the lost at a rapid rate. How do we do that? We set up the, 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 the somebody said set the world. We, we have to build a well. Some more time, we have to build a well. I know y'all are like, what are you talking about? We have to build a well. Some more time, say, we have to build a well. Look, and then when we build the well, when they come to the well, we're now able to offer them something. Well, what, what am I talking about when the, the Samaritan woman? You remember when Jesus went to the well, and she came for natural water, but she left with eternal life. It's time for us to build a well. It's time for us to make opportunities where people get, can, can come and get food and make opportunities where come and get. And we have done, we do a great job with our food distribution. But now I really believe that God now says at the rapid rate, there's more that we have to do and we have to have more people to do it with. So here it is. God is now saying, I need you to build a well of food distribution. I need you to build a well where now we have our own clothing. Now I need you to build a well. Where, there's so many things that we're going to do. But when we build the well, now when they come to the well, we're able to offer them eternal life. Oh, look, let's look at that scripture if we can. Build the well and supply the need. Look at John 4. Look at John 4. Verse 1, it says, The, the news quick, quickly reached the Jewish religious leaders, knowing, known as the Pharisees, that Jesus was drawing greater crowds of followers coming to ba baptize then John, although Jesus himself, this is a past translation, although Jesus himself didn't baptize, but only his disciples, Jesus heard what was, what was being said, and he abruptly left Judea and returned to the providence of Galilee, and he had to pass through Samaria. Jesus arrived in a Samaritan village, a, a secure, near the field that Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Wearied by the long journey, he sat on the edge of Jacob's well. My God, sat on the edge of Jacob's well and sent his disciples into the village to buy food for, for, for it was already afternoon. So a Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. He replied, why would a Jewish man ask a Samaritan woman to drink a drink of water? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus replied, if you only knew who I am, and the gift that God wants to give you, you will ask for a drink, and I will give you living water. Well, here, here it is. So he, he starts to sparks the conversation. Here it is. He built the well. He went to the well. It was already built. And here it is. He, he sparks the conversation. Give me drink. So he knew for a fact that she was a Samaritan. He says, give me drink. So here she is. She's bold with it. Why, you, why would a Jewish man ask me? What is he doing? He started a conversation. When we're giving our food, we're not just giving our food and going, we're starting to come and say, hey, you need prayer? Hey, we want to, can we pray with you during this time? What are we doing? We're starting a conversation. How are you doing? How's everything looking? How, you know I mean? oh, the, how many children do you have? Oh, my God. What are we doing? We open up conversation just like Jesus did. Somebody said, build a well. We got to build a well. And then what, it, it's, to me, it's like, it's like a, a, a water cooler. Now we have a conversation piece. We, we, we come to come to our church and we're giving our food. Come to our church. We're giving drinks. I'll come to our church. We're doing all these things. Come. But what are we doing? We're building a well. And Jesus began to have a conversation with her. He began to now well, Now she's letting her guard down. Oh, that's so good. And Jesus, uh, and, and Jesus, uh, verse, verse 11, the woman replied, but sir, you don't even have a bucket. And the well is very deep. So where do you find the list living water? Do you really think that you are greater than the ancestor Jacob who dug this well and drank, for your, drank for, from it yourself along with your, his children and lifestyle? Look, here she is. Now she's, now she's engaging. You don't even got a bucket. What you doing here? Talking about, what, living water, go deep. You don't have a bucket. What is he doing? Now he's, she, she's now been, she's now looking. Now, asking questions, she's now observing. So here we go, Jesus. Verse 13, Jesus answered, if you, have, if you drink from Jacob's well, you'll be thirsty again. But if anyone drinks from the living water I've given them, they will never thirst again. But when you drink the water I give you, 
It becomes a gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit flowing, I mean, flow, uh, flooding you with endless life. I love this. Look at this. Here it is. When we got, this is the opportunity to make a well. Somebody said build a well. And when we build a natural well, look what happened. The spiritual gifts that we talked about in 1 Corinthians. Spiritual gifts begin to activate. And here it is. Now, see, the, the spiritual gifts God begin to activate, the gift of prophecy begin to op operate in Jesus. Listen, this is what's going to happen. If you give your life to Jesus, I'm going to give you living water. The spiritual gifts begin to activate. When, you, when we begin to now build the wells and we begin to bring people come, come from the south, north, south, east, and west, and when they begin to come, yes, they're looking at something natural, but now the spiritual gifts that God placed on the inside of you, the grace on your life God placed on the inside will give me the, begin to activate. That's so good to me. Then a woman replied, let me drink that water so I'll never be thirsty again and won't have to come back to here to draw water. Jesus said, go, get your husband and bring him back here. Well, I, I, I'm not married, the woman answered. That's true, Jesus said. For, with, for you've been married five times and now you're living with a man who is not your husband. You have told the truth. Can we say something like that? Oh, my God. You've been married five times, and the man you're with now is not your husband. But look at this. Now, in that moment, look at this. Jesus didn't begin to operate in the gift of the word of knowledge. He's now, the, the gifts are, are moving on him now. He began to operate in the gift of the word of knowledge. And we know that the word of knowledge is supernatural revelation by the Holy Spirit of certain facts in the mind of God. The word of knowledge always reveals facts about the past. So here it is. He said, the, 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 the man you're with now is not your husband. You have five other husbands. What is happening now? The gift is operating on the inside. What am I trying to get us to see? I wanted you to see the example how when we bend the will the well, God, the gift that God placed on the inside. Some of you say, I've been called to preach. Some of you say, I've been called to be a fan. Some of you say, I've been called to, to have the word of knowledge and, and prophet, the prophesy and all those things. Here it is. Could it be you just haven't built the well? You haven't set, set yourself in a position to be used what God calls you to be in this time and season of our life. We haven't set, set ourselves in position to let the love of God, because look at this. In, in, in 1 Corinthians um, 13, we see here, here it is. You feed the poor, but you do not love. You are nothing. Remember that scripture? We, 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 I mean, uh, uh, verse 1, I think verse 2, it says that. Here it is. God's saying, listen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to realize. I want, I've given you all these things. I've given you this, the gifts of the Spirit. I've given you the various gifts. and I give you the opportunity to do so. And I showed you how to do it through the love of God for this season right here. To build a well. When you build a well, I'm going to set you up that you can use the gifts that God has for you. The woman changed the subject. You must be a prophet. So tell me this. Why do fathers worship? Uh, why, why do our fathers worship God on the nearby mountain? But you people teach Jerusalem, teach that Jerusalem is the place where you must worship. Who's right? Jesus responded. Believe me, dear woman, the time has come when you will worship the Father, neither in mountain or, nor in Jerusalem, but in your hearts. Oh, glory. Your people don't really know the one they worship. But we Jews worship out of our experience. For it's from the Jews, Jews that salvation is available. From now on, worshiping the Father will not be the matter of the right place, but the right heart. Oh, that's, it doesn't matter where you are, we can worship. Amen? It is for God is a spirit, and he longs to have sincere worshipers who adore him in the realm of the spirit and in truth. Jesus gave a, like that God, Jesus gave a word of wisdom. He revealed the purpose and the plan a God have for a future. For, for, for where we are right now, God is always looking to try to take people to from, from the, the place of despair, from the place of, of, of not having enough, and he's trying to take them to a place where God supplies all their needs. If God has been supplying your needs, let me see your hands. God is to be, look around everybody, my God, in the midst of a pandemic, people getting jobs. In the midst of a pandemic, people getting healed. In the midst of a pandemic, people getting houses, what, what God has been taking care of us in this time of season. But there's people out there who don't know that, don't have hope, don't have that what you have. And here God says, I need you to create a will so that now you can give them some hope. So now that you can give them purpose. You can set them in the right place and give them purpose and give them hope. What I called them to be and do in this time. I love about this. Look, it goes down to um, verse, verse 33. 
Puzzled by this, the disciples begin to discuss to the, among themselves, did someone already bring him food? Verse 34, to clarify, Jesus spoke up and said, for my foods, uh, let, uh, let me, uh, yeah, yeah, my foods is to do the will of him who sent me to bring into completion. Look at this, so, uh, where was I at? Uh, one week. Please forgive me. Here it is, verse 27. Let me go back to 27. At the moment, the disciples returned. Um, were stunned to see Jesus speaking to a Samaritan woman. Yet none of them dared to ask him why and what they were discussing. All at once, the woman left her water jar and ran off to the village and told everyone, come and meet a man at the well who told me everything I have ever done. Look at this. Here it is. Not only when you, now we create this well and the spiritual gifts begin to now work on your life, now you have the ability now to pull the gifts out of them. She became evangelist right then and there. She became evangelist right then and there. And because the gifts began to work, because she was now in a position, we was at a position around the well. She, they, they built the well. He now began to use his spiritual gifts, and now he now catapulted to her gifts. She went and told the city. Oh, that's so good. How, how many gifts are lying dormant in people's life because they're waiting for you to build a well so that now you can ignite the gift, ignite the calling, ignite the grace, ignite the ability on the inside of them. The Bible says that, that comes, come meet a man at the well who told me everything I need to know. He could be the one we've been waiting for. Hearing this, the people came streaming out of the village to go see this Jesus. Can you imagine? Look how much influence she had. Look how much influence she had. That, the, that she was able to just say something and the whole village began to stream out the city to go see Jesus. Who, who's that one person? All we need is one person. Who's that, who's that next Martin Luther King waiting for you? Who, who's that one that, that, that's waiting for, the, for us to build a will that now can pull the grace and power out of them? We've been called to this. Somebody say go. Somebody say go. Look what it says in verse 35. I'm going to leave you on this one. As the crowds emerged from the village, Jesus said to his disciples, why would you say the harvest is another four months away? Look at all the people coming. Now is harvest time. Close your eyes. I want you to see on the inside of you, which is your spiritual eye. I want you to look at all the people coming. Look at all those people coming out the hills. Look at all those people coming out of their houses. Look at all those people that's, that's, that's logging on to our sites. Look at all those people, how the numbers are going up. Look at all these people for the harvest is now. The harvest is now. Now is harvest time. Somebody say, now is harvest time. Oh, we had a place now. Now is harvest time, y'all. Now, was, I love God. He, he works when it looks destitute. He works when, when things don't look right. Now is Harvest time. This is, I'm telling you, this is a prophetic word right here. Now is harvest time. Their hearts are like vast fields of ripened grain, um, grain, ready for the harvest. Everyone who reaps these souls for eternal life will receive reward. Both those who plant spiritual seeds and those who reap the spiritual harvest will celebrate together with great joy. And this confirms the saying, one sows the seed, Another reaps the harvest. I have sent you out to the harvest field that you, that you haven't planted, where many others have labored long and hard before you. And now you are, you are privileged to profit from the labors and reap the harvest. Oh, my God. We, God is sending us out. Somebody say, go. God is sending us out. God is sending us during this time of season. There's a harvest that's waiting. There's a, there's, there's a people with souls out there that, that they're ripening for the harvest. I don't know about you. Right now, we, me and my wife, we, we, we always take opportunities to minister. We always take opportunities to, to be a blessing to people. We always take those opportunities. And how I many know it's so easy for us to, to, to share the love of God? So easy to show the people are waiting for. We was out of town with, with the apostles, and, and we had to serve. We went to the same restaurant every day, but the grits were good, so... 
And we went to the same restaurant every single day, and this, we had the same waitress. She was so nice to us. And, we, you know, we didn't, hey, glory, how? We, we weren't doing all that. You know what we did? We showed the love of God. We showed the love of God. She came over. She, she, you know, we, she, we, we went past our preferences. She wasn't the same color as us. We showed the love of God. We began, with everything going on, we showed the love of God. With everything that was said about people, we began to show the love of God to her. And the last day she came to us, and now, why? Because now we have built a rapport with her. We began now, she came to us, and she said, uh, I'm, I'm, how, y'all do, how you doing? We doing good? She said, we said, how you doing? She said, well, I just got a ticket last night. Uh, and the ticket, the, the guy knew me, he gave me a ticket for $200. I said, a $200 ticket? What, what are you doing for $200? Two hundred dollar ticket, and I'm just, you know, man, just believe in God. So she walked away from the table, and the pastor said, "You know what? We're gonna pay that ticket." Okay, we're gonna pay, pay the ticket, and, and we begin. And she came over to the table, and we begin to minister. Uh, uh, pastor Cynthia began to minister to her, and, and, and Pastor Tony said, "Here, well, I'm gonna give you this towards your ticket." And Pastor Cynthia said, "Here, I'm gonna give you the rest towards your ticket." And she just broke down crying. Then how we know? Then we had because we was able to build a well. She was able to receive the love of God that we had for her. She's staying there now. She said, hey, funny. She said, hey, we, we were sitting there on, the, on the side of them. And they said, you know, their pastor talking about me and Pastor Porsche. I'm like, y'all apostles, what are you doing? <laughs> Duh. And, and, she, and again, she said, then she began to say, and then we said, well, y'all pastors too. She said, you know what? We, I want to let you know that God loves you. And God wants better for you. And God... Do you go, she said, do you go to church? She said, I'm going to church now. But what happened? We built a well. We were able to take care of a natural need. And now it was spiritually affected her. And so many times we miss opportunities that God has for us. So many times we've done the first thing, yeah, we give and we give a good tip. and all. No, but now there's an opportunity. The door has been opened that you built a well. And now there's gifts. Hey, God showed me about your child. Don't worry, your child is coming back home. God, show me about your, your mother. She's going to get well. What, what's going on now? The spiritual gifts begin to operate because I'm standing just like Jesus by the will. Time for us to build some wells, y'all. Time for us to be the gift that God calls to be and do in this time and season of our life. It's time for us not to no longer look by past who we've been called to be. We've been called to be the light in the midst of darkness. We've been called to be the salt in the land. We have been called to, to win the lost. It's time for us just to talk about it, and I'm going to pray about it, but literally be in the feet and hands of Jesus Christ. That's what he called us to be. At the end of the day, he didn't say, go have good, a great church service. He didn't say that. He says, go make disciples of all nations. So listen, y'all, we, we got to change our perspective. We got to get, we have to get our mindset back to what God has called us in time and season. So when we're singing, when we're playing, when we're ushering, when we're doing all these things, when we're deacon, when we're doing all these things, it's not just form or fashion, but we're going to a place, listen, hey, I'm building a well that people that are lost, building a well that people might not have a voice, give them a voice so that now they can now experience the spiritual freedom that God has for them. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. We're here, and we're at a place that now we have to get to a place where we have to be where God is, and God is at the lowest right now. I don't know about you, me and my wife, we've been saying to ourselves, oh, there's so much stuff going on at the same time. We don't, I don't think we should bypass this. This might, this might be a 9-11 moment. This might be, you know what I mean? There's moments in time that you remember. There's moments in time that shift the, the, the course of life, that shift the course of uh, the way we're living. I don't know about you, but the way, the way we lived two years ago is not the way we live now. And things have been shifted. It could be that God is now preparing us, the remnant of this church, down to win as many people we can for Jesus Christ in this time and season. I don't know when he's coming back. I know, don't know the day and hour. But one thing I can say is there's, a, there, 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 there's, there's things that you see in the spirit. You got to be, you got to be sensitive. God, what are you saying today? Now, what are you doing today? God, me and my wife, God, when you bless us, what do you want us to do with this money? Who do you want us to bless? What do you want us to build? What well do you want us to build? So during this, during this um, Thanksgiving and Christmas season, I want us to really think about you being the gift. Start going back to what we've been talking about for the past 15 weeks and start going back to the day. We're talking about, hey, I, I've been called. I've been, anybody been blessed 
in this room? Let me see your hands. Anybody been blessed in your body, been blessed in your finance, been blessed in your family? But look at this. He said, I've caused you to be blessed to be a blessing. So my job is, yes, my job is not done. I'm not just here to receive, but I'm here also to give. Give love. Give peace. Give, give, give understanding. Giving loving kindness. Giving people, uh, 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 when, when we have opportunities, hey, listen, we have a food distribution. It shouldn't be 10 people. It should be 100 people. Why? Because now what our goal is, listen, we're not just giving you food. We're not just giving you a, a, a drink. We're not, but God, now behind that, we want to give you a spiritual gift. We want to give you the love of God. We want to show you the love of God, the same love that God showed me. I don't know, but anybody show God, God showed love to you, even in the midst of your sin? Even when you felt like giving up, God showed his love to you? Even his grace and mercy, oh glory, in my life. Why? Because he loves us. He loves us. But one thing God does, not only does he want to give love to you, he's now giving you ability that you can share that love with someone else. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. I love you guys.